What's going on everybody? Jay Hayes here, today I'm be doing a review on a device that I picked up for the purposes of the review. <sighs> Trying to stay calm right off the jump. I really, really am. Anybody that remembers back when I did my NCR video it was kind of a breakthrough for me. Um, I, I was already known out there, a lot of people knew me, but a lot of people found me because of that video. If you haven't seen that review, I'll go and I'll post a link right there. Basically, that device right there has this weird ceramic little plate. You wrap the cotton around, you put the clamp on, then you put the top adapter on, then you vape it. The only problem I had was, well, it tasted like shitholes. That's exactly what it tasted like. And then there was another one that came out, but I can't find what it was that came out after the NCR. But now we're here again. Okay, listen. Before I go ripping Joytech's limbs off of their body. Okay. If you look up how these are made, the little ceramic dishes, it's the same thing that's in this, that the same thing is in the NCR. These use aluminum nitride. Listen, I, I don't, I'm not sitting here saying I'm some type of vapologist or I'm some kind of guy that does science experiments. I, I think I am a guy that does experiments though. I don't, I don't think I fall in the field of science, just more of a I don't give a shit attitude. But the problem I have with this, and in order for me to even enjoy this, I have to at least know what we got going on. I have to know how something is made. I know how Cantal is made, that's what I use. I also know how Nichrome is made. I also know how Chromium is made. I've done my research. I like to think that I'm smarter than what I really am. It makes me feel better at night when I'm laying down like, oh shit, I got smart today. That just makes me feel better. What makes me feel like shit is when I'm presented with the same shit that we used not even but six months ago, seven months ago. The funny thing is, is I found an article on Vaping360 where they talk about how bad the NCR is and then they pulled it and told nobody to buy it. I, that, for some reason that's listed as December 1st, but my review wasn't until January 12th. And there wasn't a lot of people that were talking about that, plus a lot of reviewers didn't do it. However, this is a different story with this guy. A lot of people are doing reviews on this and they're ignoring the fact of what is on the inside. I feel that is our responsibility as reviewers to let the public know about shit like this that's coming out. I am gonna flip it. Let me show you everything that's inside of the box. I could tell you already that this is not going to end well. Like, there, there's, you could just skip forward the whole part. I never tell people that. Just skip forward I don't even know if I want to fucking bring it down. I don't know, man. I don't know. I, I guess I have to because I want to show you what's inside the box. I guess it wouldn't be complete if I didn't do that. All I'm going to tell you is just be prepared for what's going to happen on the top. It is raining outside, but if something is so fucking ridiculous and so stupid, then of course I'm going to go outside and destroy it. I don't give a shit if there's it's snowing. I've never in my vaping career wanted to avoid going down and coming back up. The shit that I do for you guys. So without further ado. Let's flip it. Riff Core Duo. I've been wanting to do a review on this for a long, long time. On the top and on the bottom, absolutely nothing. On the side, you have all their social media. Joytech is a very, very well-known company. I'm not quite sure why they would venture into this realm. Maybe because they realize that the competition that they have, Smoke, iJoy, is devouring them out of the market. So they have to make something that's unique to where people are going to want to buy it. Not today, Charlie Brown. For your scratch and sniff, this is going to be lung flavor and scented because that's exactly what you're going to taste when you vape on this. On the back side, all the information, let's just cut the bullshit. None of this even matters. It doesn't matter if it said that it included a $100 bill. What's your mouth worth? Keep out of reach of children. You should say keep out of the reach of people. Warranty card. You're going to need that. And the warning card. RFC heater. You know, if something was supposed to be safe, right? Like if, let, let's just say that they're labeling this as safe, like they are. Why is it so difficult to find any kind of information about this on their website? If, 
if you know you have something that works well or there's no problems with it, wouldn't you publicize that? I, I feel like you hiding something, there's a reason for it. No one hides something because usually hide the truth because that's going to hurt people's feelings. But people are going to buy this and they expect you to be honest with them. God, this makes me so fucking irritated. Oh my God, dude. Open up the fucking box. Joy Tech, shame on you, man. Fucking shame on you. You should be ashamed of yourself. That's assuming that the insides of this is exactly like the NCR, which I'm pretty sure it is. It's very difficult to find the schematics or what the makeup is of those chips that is inside. They label it as ceramic, but how was it made? Was it just poured into a block and cut? Or was there certain metals, aluminum nitride, that was used to make this work? Which one is it? I get mad with this shit. This is the shit that it's not about being a piece of shit. It's not about, you know, being a hoopty or shangati. It's about keeping it real, being honest with the people. Joy Tech is typically known to make solid products. I know some people hate their shit, but you know, you have to give them that. So let's, uh, what the fuck is this? A pair of tweezers? Why would you include a set of tweezers? Stupid. Warranty card. You're gonna need that because I feel like you're gonna do the same shit with this that I'm gonna do with it. <sighs> Riftcore Duo Quick Start. Let's see what they label in here. I guarantee you they don't talk about the material of what they're using to heat up. RFC. Joytech's got the money. You know, Joytech has got the money to where they could say, let's hire some third party company, have them forge documents. Am I, am I claiming forgery? Uh, yeah, I am. I am. I actually am. Because I feel that if you're going to, it just, it makes me so angry. What's inside the fucking box? A life insurance card? And the sad thing is there's other reviewers that have done this and they didn't do this research. Maybe if they weren't so fucking jaded with the $300 or $400 or however much money that they got to do the review and bump the queue or whatever the case may be, they could have looked at, oh, let me look at the health defects of this fucked up trash. No, no. Oh, you're giving me money. Let me just do a review on it, even though it lights your hair on fire. That makes sense. Okay. Well, I hope that helps you sleep better at night, because it doesn't for me. So you get some stupid fucking emblem on the inside there, some O-rings, some screws, an Allen key, a glass, and then another package that's got cotton. Then you get these little cockroach slivers of cotton, which you're going to need. I'm not going to use this. Notice how this is a different color than this. Guys, consistency is key here, right? Like you can see that this is much whiter than this cotton over here. Let's see what this warning card says. At least give me the proper fucking warning. Give me something. A lot of what they're using, this whole RFC heater, ceramic plates, sounds like they took things from the NCR, swapped it around and did exactly the same shit self-clean how cool is that you know something is nice when it you don't even have to bother how, what would you do if you know you you leave for work one day your house is a mess you come back home and it's totally clean wouldn't you wonder how the hell did it get this way i feel the same way about this vape why exactly is this self-clean section right here all underlined and bolded why drip tip on the top let's just who cares who cares about any of this like let's just let's who cares being dramatic fine whatever like who cares Okay, great. This does something shit. You, you, you flip it open. Maybe you don't. Slides. Cool. Nice. Great. Glass. Nice. And then there you go. So let me explain what we got going on here. So same type of deal you see with this is on the NCR. The NCR had a really tall one that you wrap the cotton around, put the bracket on, then put the adapter over it. Your ceramic plate is right here and right here. So this cotton, you just pick up and lift out like so. Not a bad idea, right? Why not use mesh? Why not use something else other than this? I will tell you this, that Joytech's idea of this is much cleaner than that of the NCR. Doesn't mean that it's better though, that just means that it's cleaner. I don't even know why we're doing this because I don't feel like it matters. The way that the airflow is gonna work, it's gonna come in from the bottom and then go right here on the side of the ceramic and then kind of go around where the cotton is. Picture this like one big coil, but the top part of the coil is missing and just the left and the right side. So this heats up, this heats up and then of course the airflow is going to hit this and then work its way through the center of the chamber and fire 
I'm not going to use their cotton. I'm going to use my own just because I, I want to rule out as many as awkward variables as possible. I'm not going to use their little guide of what that little metal bracket is on the inside here. This little thing that I was losing my shit about is how they want you to cut the cotton right here. But I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to wing it just by looking at it. I don't know why I would need to use that. part on. I don't know if you guys remember on the original NTR the problem I had was the deck got extremely hot. Same type of thing now. There's an arrow up here. Just flip that open and then fill it up. So we're going to try to use this. The other one was a dripper. This one is a tank. I'm not going to put too much juice in it just like that. So once again that is the Rift Core Duo. Let's bring it on the top. We weren't down for long because I, I was I'm saving a lot of what is going on in my brain right now for top side. So here we are back on top with the Rift Core Duo by Joytech and I think we already know how I feel about this device. Let me show you some vapor production. I don't know why I'm going to do this but I'm gonna do it. 44.5 on a 0.27. It tastes pretty good. It does. I'm not getting that same thing that I got with the NCR. Let's bump it up a little bit. Let's go up a block maybe. Let's go to 50. We'll do 54.5 on the same exact build. Okay. All right. Getting a lot of flavor. I am. I'm not going to deny that. On Joytech's website, they list that this was tested and made in America. However, when they list the MSDS test, this is all on their website. Now, they may take it down after this video, but it's there. And then on the bottom of that test is a Chinese phone number. And then your graph, you're saying is from France. Which one is it? I mean, we have to pick an option here because you got three different shits going on. You made it and it was designed in the United States by who? Who designed it and who made it? Don't give me that bullshit that Joytech made it. Don't. I'm not, I'm not hearing that. Not at all. Nope. So let's just say that they did, right? Why would they hide all the information about the metals that are on the inside of it? D listen, I got people busting their ass right now trying to find out the chemical makeup of what is inside. Some people may look at this and say it's not a big deal. It just vapes good. I don't give a shit. You won't be saying that when you have a fucking sore on the inside of your mouth because this company who has a headquarters in United States is putting this shit out without any kind of repercussions whatsoever. Don't say something is made here if it's not made here. Why is your test, when it was tested in America, on the bottom of that same spreadsheet, same document, it has a Chinese phone number on it? Why would that be there? What concerns me more than anything? Let's just say that this is safe. This has been tested. I have a feeling that the same way that they made that chip is the same way that NCR did it on theirs. And a lot of people avoided doing reviews for NCR as, well, they just didn't pay anybody or no one did it just because they didn't do it. There's very few reviews out there and the reviews that are out there reference either my review or the, the article where they tell you that the company tells you not to buy it. That, that's a real thing. I'm going to put all these links in the description because a lot of what I'm saying doesn't make sense, but this is all real. I'm, you can't make this shit up. I'm not going to deny that this doesn't have good flavor. There's no way am I going to deny that. I put my own cotton in there. We got no leaking. It's working perfectly fine. I'm really nervous about what is on the inside of this. Let's look at the track record, right? Other companies aside from Altus and NCR have made other types of heating blocks. Someone had mentioned this in the NCR video in the comments that there was another device that was made that has kind of the same deal where it's a chip that heats up. That flopped as well. It was No, it was actually a big company. Oh my God. 
Oh my God, I gotta pull up the video. I gotta pull it up. Oh my God, what was it? Was it Sig? I think it was Sig. They tried to push it to be popular before the NCR and they didn't do so. Sig Vexus. And I do believe that they tried to use the same chip that they used in the Altus, but that failed. We see this time and time again where companies are coming out with things, but Sig, pretty big company, didn't do it right. They didn't market it right or they didn't, I, I don't know whether it was a lot of complaints, I'm not sure. But now we're here with Joytech doing the same thing. We're assuming that this is ceramic. Ceramic itself is not conductive, so it shouldn't be heating up unless you have something inside of it. Think about like other devices that has a ceramic style oven and then you have coils to it to get the ceramic hot to bake whatever is inside of it. It's the same thing. If this is ceramic, right? You have to have something coating it on the inside of it to get it to heat up. I'm just gonna put this to you in the nicest of ways. I do not think that anybody should vape on this. There's gonna be people that are gonna say it's okay. There's gonna be people that are gonna say it's bad. But my recommendation, as me as a reviewer, as me as who I am, I will highly advise, it would behoove you to not use this device. Use something where you know what's inside. Canthal, you can look up the distributor and they list what their percentages of iron, chromium. They list all that inside the ingredients. Svandik does the same thing. There's plenty of companies that don't worry about what's on the inside. This is the type of shit that gives us a bad name as a vape community. This is to Joytech. I think Joytech needs to put out a piece of paper that says what is on the inside of this instead of just making people go on a wild goose chase trying to figure out where the hell it's flying. Got your Labrador out there trying to chase the duck. Duck falls out of the sky. Labrador goes in, sinks in the mud. All this nonsense to figure out where in the hell all the stuff is coming from on the inside of this chip. I don't approve of this. I don't think it's a good idea. But if something's not broke, don't fix it. What I really want to do is take the ceramic or those blocks, whatever they're made out of, and bring them to a lab and have them break that down to tell me what is on the inside of that. And before you argue in the comments and say, oh, well, there's worse things that we could be vaping on, um, yeah, no, that's not a good argument. I'm not even gonna rate this because I think it's a piece of shit. And I know there's plenty of people out there that already bought this. Sure there is, absolutely. And there's plenty of reviewers that say it's great. They're, they're not sure how it works or what it does, but it's great. That's cool. What we're looking at right now is Joytech's website for the Riffcore Duo. Let's take a look at Joytech's website. Scroll down, Riffcore Duo. Keep scrolling down. A lot of hidden information about this. Innovative Joytech RFC heater. Made in USA. Molecule heating. So let's scroll down to right about here is where we start to really raise an eyebrow. Looking at the right side of the website, safe material free to vape. The RFC heater is made in USA and safely tested to independent US laboratory. Feel free to use. Nowhere on here do they provide a link to this U.S. laboratory. Also, when you scroll down to their MSDS sheet, there's a number here of the factual sheet, the date, the page, one of six. Now, there is no access to this whole thing. Let's just go to this website right here, the CPST. This is the CPST website. And then over here, we're gonna to go to customer service, you go to report query, and then here is where you're going to enter the same number that is on the RefCore website. Let's go over here, let's take a look. So we have C1805, C1805, 18044, 1 and 001. Same exact one, inquire, absolutely nothing. So either they didn't update their website in two months or this is not factual. Looking at the number down here on the bottom, this is not a U.S. phone number. Like Sunshine Liu? I mean, I, it doesn't sound like a real realistic name. 
find. So we can't find the report. This company is real, although based out of China, is not in fact the U.S. laboratory. One more thing to mention is right here, Rifcor Duo Mission Test, you have France and Four Standard. Now you see that there's no recommendations. Let's click that. So and AFNOR, unless they spelled it wrong, but you click this. I don't think this has anything to do with, unless we go to food safety, it is possible that this is what they're talking about, but they did type it wrong over here. But again, this has nothing to do with US, neither does the test down here. There is no information as to what materials are in this. It's absolutely hidden across the board. You, you can't find any kind of information. So one more thing to worth mentioning is if you go to Joytex TPD download link, there is the information for Riff Core Duo. Now, this is just for TPD submission. Ready for it. If we go to the product design file, you're not obviously going to be able to see anything because I, I don't even know why they're listing that on the website. But over here is an emission test report. We click that. Guess what? I don't have the access. Please enter the password. There is no way to pull any of that information up. All I'm saying is that based off their website right here, all the information is all bullshit. None of this actually validates anything uh, even the certificate nothing makes any sense as to why it was tested they'd almost be better off not saying it was tested just because if you're making a test like this or you're making this kind of claim it almost appears like you're trying to cover up for people that are going to say something negative in regards to it like oh we did this test here you're wrong it's totally safe well show me because all the stuff that's on their website is not valid a little bit of research goes a long way, and I've kept it real. Have you, James?